This is part 5 of the Stuart Major Beam Engine Rebuild, and this is about making the flywheel pedestal. I've just come back from my therapist, and I said, it's really all getting too much for me. I don't think I can cope anymore. And he said, why not make the flywheel pedestal? You will feel much better after you've done that. So the first thing to do when making a flywheel pedestal, or working with any cast part, is to clean up the casting. This is not a particularly nice casting, it's got a lot of flashing all the way around the edge, and all the way around the inside edge. A good way of cleaning up castings is to use a drum sander like this, and as I've just shown in the video, it's very important to make sure you keep the drum sander moving, otherwise a line will appear and there'll be no sandpaper there. There is a very visible imperfection at the top end of the pedestal. I'm just taking care of this with a bit of filler. As you can clearly see, most of the cleaning up of this pedestal casting has been done with a file and my linisher and so far the results are quite good. Even by hand the part is fairly accurate. I'm going to run it through the milling machine and double check this. It's time now to mark out for the holes to be drilled in the part. And I still don't have any engineer's blue, I use matte black paint, that way I can spray my thumb too. The hole positions are very important and what's more important is that I make the hole positions for the correct bearing. I learnt early on with this engine that parts only fit one way round, so I need to find out which is the bearing that fits on the bed plate and which is the bearing that goes on the pedestal. I would like to take this opportunity to apologise to any proper meticulous type engineers watching this video. I don't do things in a very orthodox manner sometimes. Like this is very unengineering. I'm really sorry about it. I really am terribly sorry about it. I do have a set of transfer punches but they're still in the box and by the time I get those out of the box I can do it this way which is to mark through the holes onto the paint with a needle file. Over now to my drilling machine I clamp the pedestal in my machine vise and using a centre drill in the chuck I drill a hole exactly in the centre of the small shiny ring that I made in the paint with the point of the needle file. It's vital to use a centre drill for this. It will work with a twist drill, but you'll wander all over the place, and it won't be as accurate. And before I get lots of meticulous type comments, yes, I know this is not an accurate way of doing it. I could do it very accurately if I really wanted to, but this is just a pedestal to support the flywheel. And the pedestal is going to be bolted down onto a piece of wood. And the wooden baseboard of a model steam engine is never going to be the most accurate part in the world. I would never dream of using anything like this method on a high tolerance component, but this is not a high tolerance component. If you've been taking notice of the video, you will see that I'm now drilling the other side of the top part of the pedestal, first of all with the centre drill. At this point I fit the twist drill, but before I go through the newly centre drilled hole, I go down through the original hole that I drilled, and I set a depth stop, so that both these holes are exactly the same depth, that way the studs will sit level at the top of the pedestal. The holes in the top of the pedestal are drilled 7 seconds of an inch in diameter. This is tapping size for the studs that I'm going to be using. I'm currently drilling the holes in the base part of the pedestal. It's a very similar procedure to the one I've just shown in the top of the pedestal, except the holes go all the way through and they are quarter of an inch in diameter to take quarter of an inch holding bolts like these. This will allow the pedestal to be firmly bolted down to the baseboard. With an engine of this size, I may actually put a metal plate on the baseboard before I bolt down the pedestal, just to stop it moving around. This is a large engine, the flywheel is 14 inches in diameter, it's made from cast iron and it's very heavy, I wouldn't like to drop it on my foot. By spreading the load on the baseboard with a metal plate, it should make a more stable platform for the flywheel's outer bearing. What you're watching at the moment are various checks on squareness of the component. And to say it's finished by hand, with the exception of course of the small drum sander, it's pretty good, I really am pleased with this. And what I did to verify this was I put it in the milling machine and took some very fine cuts across the top and bottom of the column. But really looking at the amount of metal that I removed from each end in one pass, I didn't need to do it, it was accurate to start with. So it just goes to show you don't always need the best of equipment. Well, I haven't got the best of equipment, my milling machine is quite an embarrassment really. And talking about embarrassing, I set up the shots for the milling machine sequence and unfortunately forgot to press the record button. That is of course a bit of a disadvantage of the way I do this. All the video that you see is shot in real time. 
none of it is staged for the camera, so I can't re-remove the metal that's already been removed. And while this video is uploading to YouTube, I think you will have a quick look around the web and buy a book called Videography for Dummies. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful.